he's just a hack. He's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. We're back here for another episode of the Believe in FCS Football Podcast. A very sick Joe DeLeo and a very normal Sean Anderson. Actually, a very hurried Sean Anderson. Sean, how are you doing today? Hurried. <laughs> oh, oh, because that's my cue to continue. Uh, Sean, you like to do the read? He's got a, Sean has a very tight schedule that's today, a, so we have to do a, the read now. That was Over under on how long this episode lasts. That was my best uh, Muppets style joke where, you know, it's it's just as deadpan as it can get. <laughs> uh, regardless, no, I, I'm doing good. It's just always the, the stress of, all right, I know I have this time, but as producers, I think Joe and I both understand. Yeah. How fickle things can be where you can look down at your phone and realize, oh, I don't have 30 minutes. I have six. And we got to figure this out. And it's not just producers. It's people in media all over the place. You know, you you think you're booking radio spots. You think you have time. And then, you, oh, I got to. Oh, I I do have to jump from this because even if you're doing some really cool stuff, you're constantly moving, constantly moving, constantly moving. So it's kind of still kind of uh, getting um, inundated with that at a, at a higher level is what I'll say. Yeah, I don't think you'll ever get inundated with it because it's just like it's never yeah. it's never easy to properly manage. But uh, how are you doing, Sniffles? How's your day been? Shut the fuck. Whoa. Up. Don't don't call me Sniffles. Don't. I'm don't, sorry. Um, don't undermine me. Don't patronize me. I, sorry. Can... Hey, hey, sick. Hey, you sick lad. What's wrong with you? I, I, I'm I'm sick. We're moving on. <laughs> no, what, what are you sick with? I have a sore throat. OK, and I'm, I went I didn't. I, I What happened? I Drank too hard last night. No, I I have actually, and and I know that you're gonna laugh at this. I have decided that for the next month I am not going to drink. Oh Do you think that, that holds. The uh my house has stated, hey, maybe January we ease the brakes a little bit and try to do a sober <laughs> January thing. Which I'm I I'm think I'm gonna uh I don't know. I'm gonna ride it out, see how we do. Uh obviously <clears throat> taking it back a couple gears. Uh, but I mean, national championship games in January. A lot of good bowl games. A lot of lot of uh, FCS national championship in January. How are you going to be? How are you going to be right. soberly not watching uh, uh, um, whoever the two teams that we picked to be in the national championship uh, to make it? And well, play? That, that, that's why I'm look at that. This. Look at that teaser. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm doing December because yeah, there's the holidays at the end of the year, but then there's New Year's, and then to your point. First of all, if you hypothetically are out here in Los Angeles for Radio Row, like we're going to want to go do stuff. I'm not going to be that, you know, that lame ass friend that doesn't want to drink when we go places. But I like, know you I'm would used... love to, but you know, and I and no matter how much I try, that you're going to probably incentivize me to drink. So uh, I'm taking this month off. I drank too much uh, when I was home in just a week span, and that is enough to hit the reset button. Wednesday to Sunday was a bloodbath. Yes, it was just a continuous. Hey, it's party time. <laughs> it's not party time anymore. It's a Tuesday and Wednesday staring you right in the fucking eyes. <laughs> yeah, you know you've been drinking too much when it starts to peel over into a couple days after. Like that's uh, the like I stopped on yeah. on Thursday after Thanksgiving and I was like, let's let's relax. And on Monday I still felt terrible. I've been working out hard yesterday, today. Mm-hmm. I mean, kill just sauna, get it out of me get it out of me I need to, <laughs> maybe i can get to, to, to friday whatever we'll figure it out um well i don't feel bad that you're sick because eventually uh you know you'll be fine yeah uh, and, and then, you'll uh, get sick and then i'll feel better about that um sure of course sean we've got games to talk about i wish we had time to address the drama that has unfolded in the fcs landscape but like it's a little too complicated for me to understand sam herder has done a really good job of covering it and how these Teams are like paying for for bids and games again. I don't fully understand it. We'll talk about yeah. it eventually. Um, but before we get to the previewing round two, as we're doing right now, could you just share with our listeners a message from Bet Online? Sure. A lot of really good props out this week. Uh, amount of uh, boxes of Kleenex that Joe goes through uh, tomorrow is set at two and a half. 
two and a half. I'm taking the under on that one. Uh, I don't have any. I've been using toilet bet, paper. Yeah, betonline.ag. You can find all these awesome props. Another prop. Well, I'm taking the under on that because knowing Joe, and this is a little insider uh, secret here. If you have insiders like this uh, for sports, go ahead and ask them about some some nice, delicious locks. But here's a lock for me. Joe's just going to wipe his snot on his sleeve and go about his day like I've seen him do his Probably. entire life. So uh, take the under on that two and a half boxes of uh, Kleenex to get over it. I think you just encouraged unethical betting, by the way. I definitely, you know what I'm saying. If you have, if you have friends that, that might have it, you know, that, that are big Seahawks fan, right? Ask them what they think. I'm a big Joe DeLeon fan. So I, I track him. I I follow the reporters that track him. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm in on the beat on Joe DeLeon. So uh, if the, um, what are you thinking? Advil? What's your what's your I just took some Advil. I'm chilling. That's yeah, that's yeah. All I over need. under on Advil pills before the evening closes is set at 12. I am taking the 12. Fuck. Uh, Joe is a man that cannot survive without vitamins and coffee, and um, you I know, didn't, I didn't consume uh, any of that other things. Uh, so uh, I'm taking the over on that, anyways. Bet online always the fastest and easiest way to bet all of your favorite sports and events, whether that's NFL, NBA, NHL. I don't care about. I'll care about NHL if the Caps are in the playoffs. Fraud fan, and I'll admit it. MMA, uh, tennis, boxing, or even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BLEAV, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. BetOnline, where the game starts. Hey, Joe, how are the Devils doing? Hey, Joe, uh, remember, fantastic. When you, remember when you told me that they were going to be the Stanley Cup champions? Uh, in Wait, you're not following the NHL, are you? No, I heard they were a dumpster fire. This year, no, they won 14 of their last 15. They stink. I can't wait for okay. them to collapse. Wow, that really f- fucking slapped. I'm cursing way too much to show. That really slapped you in the face. Did I don't not? think it did. Uh, what is going to get slapped in the face? Uh, all right. All right. Oh, so my team makes it to a ch- but, Okay, you're the one with the with the tight turnaround here, and we spent six minutes on banter, which is I'm obviously fact- trying to pad some time here, pal. We're uh, what. <laughs> We're back to our old days of of have spending way too much time bantering at the beginning beginning sure. of the show. Um, South Dakota State Delaware though, <clears throat> to get right into it, uh, number one versus an unranked, unseeded Delaware team, and I very simply put this in in my my notes on this game. As much momentum as as Delaware could have right now after the way that they played in the first round, there's only so much that you can do against the most well rounded team in the playoff right now. And we've spoken so highly on South Dakota state, assuming that they are fully healthy and there aren't any issues, which doesn't seem to be the case. Their offensive line is great. Their receivers are great. The Yankee twins are fantastic. The run game. I with Isaiah Davis is fantastic. Tucker craft just declared for the NFL draft. He's the best tight end in the FCS, possibly one of the best in the country. So this is going to be a really tough task for the, uh, for the blue hens to handle. Yeah, uh, Delaware and South Dakota. Delaware is, it's going to sound like a slight, but it kind of is, kind of isn't. They're South Dakota State Junior, and that's not just because their colors are the same, but their teams are built kind of similarly. They play similarly where obviously South Dakota State's been more dominant, but when they're playing with momentum, they're hard to stop. Uh, Delaware, obviously, an offense that when it's clicking can look like the South Dakota State offense. A defense, when it's clicking, has the potential to look like the South Dakota State defense, but unfortunately, they're playing uh, their uh, their their counterpart here, the 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 bigger. Um, they're playing the person as they are the shadow, is what I'm looking to say here. So you're not going to be able to beat the person in this scenario, unfortunately. So Delaware, uh, it was fun. I I'm I, I'm excited to see you leave because go screw. Uh, but regardless, uh, be, I mean, come on, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Uh, yeah. glad, glad Rhode Island didn't get this. <laughs> no, that would have been, been going out. They could have. They actually yeah, could have. They could have. They definitely could have. But still, uh, I'm sure I would have had a different tone if it was the boys playing right now. But uh, I mean, it's it's second round of FCS football. It's about as good as it's going to get. There's going to be one or two upsets in this in this round. There will be. And we don't know which, what they are. We're not going to claim to know what they are. It could be Gardner Webb. It could be Delaware. I'm not going to say I know which one it is. I'm not going to call an upset watch for any of these games, but it'll happen. So just sit and enjoy these games. Yes, enjoy these games. Um, I don't know why I get so thrown off by that last statement there, but I think you sure. you make a really good point. Of course I do. Where this is probably one of the easiest matchups for South Dakota State in the playoff. 
like this as as good as and as much as we want to hype up Delaware, a CAA team, they are not even match for South Dakota State. Their challenges are going to come later in the bracket, and we're going to spend more time on preparing and talking about those games than we will on this one because it is not a very competitive matchup. Uh, Holy Cross versus UNH, though, I would argue, Sean, is a far more competitive matchup because UNH, as much as, excuse me, as much as we were out on them, damn, I'm having a tough time right here. There Uh, you go. As much as we were out on them going into the playoff and talking about how soft of a schedule they had, they showed that the CAA athletes that they're able to bring to the table are still a lot better than the Patriot League ones. And look, this isn't like a hot take. And I know the Holy Cross fans, as much as you guys want to scream at me, and I'm like, the, if I'm just know that the Holy Cross fans are going to come the same way the Furman fans did in our comments. I hope they do. But if you beat Fordham by a point and UNH did Fordham the way that they did, I have a lot of faith in UNH to pull up this off, pull off this upset. And if Dylan Lobb, I think that's the pronunciation, not fully replicates, but has another strong game, be afraid. As great as Matt Sluka has been, I think he's very talented. He is the best player on your team as a passer, as a runner. I I feel as an overall team. It is a buzzsaw to be going into this this matchup. And it's not like they have to travel far. This is a close matchup between these two teams. Yeah, uh, it's tough for me to ever say that uh, when Josiah Silver's on the field, there's a better player. But Matt Saluka is that dude. Uh, he has been a dynamic on the ground and through the air. He has made this Holy Cross team respectable in my eyes. And I, I, it's respectable for Holy Cross, but still respectable in the FCS landscape. When I saw them ranked and I saw them the whole time, I said, hey, look, this offense is kind of churning. They're still winning games. And Mm -hmm. as much as like, oh, give the boys some love, give, you know, let let somebody else from the the big sky make it, whatever. Uh, uh, I had at points at times this year to say, Holy Cross, not saying they're top five legit, but they're legit enough to pose a threat in the postseason in their game, Uh, uh, in their game. All right. If I. UNH, UNH was just pulled a disman. They put on a clinic last week, though. So, your Holy Cross, you're sitting here. You have a good team. Stop the buzzsaw. Stop the buzzsaw. Stop the momentum because UNH is coming in hot. And there's nothing that UNH likes to do more. All right, we saw it. They love to start slow and they love to just ups- and they'll just turn it on for the last six weeks of the season. In CAA play, playoffs is a little bit different, but regardless, in the CAA, they just win down the stretch and they're continuing to do it. I think their coaching is really good. I think it's improved a lot since last year. I think it's improved tenfold since last mm. year. Uh, just how they game plan and, and and operate. Defense flies around. Now I say that. That's a crutch phrase for me. But it does. I got to respect teams whose defenses fly around. So Matt Saluka has got to have the, um, the game of the year, I'd say. His game of the year this week. Yeah, and again, I give credit, even though I rarely do for Holy Cross, for the season that they put together and how good they played. To, to finish undefeated, to have an FBS win, to be a seeded team is commendable. But again, like this is, it's <clears throat> it's kind of like if if like Tulane went undefeated and went into a bowl game playing against um, Wisconsin or Iowa. Like they're not great this year. Their record's not great. But there still is an obvious and blatant talent gap. A very, very obvious talent gap between these two teams. There are a lot of dudes on that UNH roster that are really freaking good players. Yeah. That, shit, we've got all these guys that are entering, entering the portal. Watch out for a lot of those guys entering the portal and going to massive programs. It's very, very possible. Yeah. The um, Who's buddy on Florida State making huge plays out of Albany? Jared uh, Verse. I could see yeah. Josiah Silver doing the same deal. Sure. Why not? Go ahead and make a name for yourself. Make millions. I'm over I'm over it. I think it's, it's a good thing, the portal, because... I saw the numbers. Uh, there's a lot of FCS guys. In the, I think it was like over 600 guys, FCS guys in there, the right now. There are a lot. And uh, Mike Farrell, who... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tweet, that's where I saw it. He, But he tweeted, uh, like, I'm just going to stop retweeting the, the portal entries because I there's too many. Ah. <laughs> he, and he said, uh, he said that. And he said, if your favorite team has their best player, just assume he's gone. That's basically what he gotcha. said. So. Yeah. Well, that's rough. Um. What is going to be rough, though, Sean, is Gardner Webb having to face off against William and Mary. And like, 
it was all fun and games that we got to talk about Gardner Webb and the the running Bulldogs. Apparently, is what they're called, which I had never heard of in my life. Which shows is that their you mascot? how much. No, they're, yeah, they're the Bulldogs, but they oh. this year is the name for them. They were uh, awarded the 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 the, the nickname, the running dogs, or whatever the hell they're called. But again, sure. their one game run is over. Uh, you're playing a real team this week, which is William and Mary, and the running back pairing and then the defensive line pairing that they have to face is so daunting. I don't think this game is going to be close. Bronson Yoder and Malachi Emo have been the best. Quite possibly the best FCS running back pairing in the country. Ooh, that and Sac State's guys, even though one of them yes. might be a quarterback. And then John Pui and Nate Lynn, who we talked about Nate Lynn at the beginning of the season. Like both those dudes are getting after the quarterback and statistically are two of the best in the country. Be very afraid. This is going to take like a real miracle to perform well. It will, and I know that it, I'm glad you brought up William Mary's run defense as well because on the season, William Mary. 3,014 rushing yards, given up uh, uh, 1,533. They're doubling their – they're literally, literally doubling teams on on how much they're rushing and then how little they're giving up. It's not great. You need to be a dynamic team if you're going to beat William Mary. You need to have a pass game also that can supplement and get you some first downs so if you are a running team, you can then try to make up for it. But it's going to be tough as hell for you to try to keep up with them. So Gardner Webb, dial up some trick plays. Dial up some trick plays. Dial up some tight end uh, good seam routes to get you 15 yards, then maybe run the rock outside. You have to get schematic. You can't keep doing what, you, uh, what you've been doing because this team is not playing around. William and Mary, not playing around this year. No, absolutely not. They are legit, and I, I'm excited to see how the, their trajectory is going to play out. I'm also excited about this game between Montana State and Weber State, Sean, because holy hell, I, I I was like thinking about this and the way that Weber played and now that they've got Josh Davis back is huge. Uh, a listener commented, and I almost didn't even think about this, Isaiah Fonze is supposed to be back for Montana yeah, State. So they've been they, waiting for him. I simply put this in, it's in our document, Sean. This game is going to be won at the line of scrimmage. This is going to be... Two battering rams slamming their heads into each other. This is going to be the epitome of big sky football, which is hard nose, uh, aggressive rushing. That's what we know them for. I know that we've got some teams that will air it out, but as we know, what Montana State has done all year without Afonze is run the hell out of Chambers and Mellet. Now you got him back, but you got to face off against another team that runs the ball really freaking well. You read my mind. You did. Uh, and you read it because of that's what big sky football is. That's what it is. And we've had teams, Eastern Washington with Eric Perrier. You aired it out. I, I Good. You, you, you tried to change the dynamic of big sky football. Doesn't matter. This is what it is. Huge rematch. It's going to be a boxing match. It's going to be a boxing match the entire game because Weber's pissed. Weber's pissed. They had him in the first, yeah. in the first matchup this time, this year. They had him. Long snapper couldn't uh, couldn't do his job. I'm not going to harp on it. I don't think Joe's going to harp on it anymore. It's just what it is what it is. Now, for Montana State, I don't think they're taking Weber State lightly. I wouldn't. You can't. You can't afford to because in, in your heart of hearts, you know you escaped with one. You know you escaped with a, with a win versus Weber State because you had four safeties, which, I don't know, never happens ever. No. Ever. So you know you escaped with one. Now what are you doing? You're saying, oh, well, we beat them last time. Maybe we'll have some more magic and get two pick sixes and, and a fumble recovery touchdown and a block punt. No, you need to go out there and play offense and defense and special teams properly and soundly. And if you're overlooking Weber State, you will lose. Montana State, you will lose this week if you overlook them. I don't think they will, though. I think they're um, they're hungry. They're hungry from last year's loss in the national championship, and, and they want to get back there and try to redeem themselves. They have the team to do it as well. They do. They have a team that can do it. Don't overlook this Weber State team, though. They're obviously on upset watch. And I think this is probably the biggest upset watch outside of the UNH game that we just talked about, which I don't think is much of an upset, to be completely honest. But as much as Montana State is on that watch, I got to say the fact that they're getting Fonze, uh, uh, Isaiah Fonze back is very, very scary. Yeah, and I. For that reason, I am picking Montana State to win this game. I think that they're going to win. Who, are you in the same boat as me? Yeah, I would say I am. 
I, I would say that it, I have to lean that way just because you're probably still a little pissed that you got shafted with the number four ranking, seeing that stupid uh, North Dakota State gets Delaware, which I know we're going to talk about, or, or gets Montana. South Dakota State gets Delaware, and then uh, Sac State gives Richmond, which we'll close with, but uh, I don't even like that matchup for Sac State. No. Regardless, uh, Montana State's going to be hungry. They, you can't waste this year, I would say. Even though they have young quarterbacks, you can't waste it. So the next game is one that infuriates us. And sure. I found out this piece of information today, and I sent it to you before we taped. And I'm glad that we got this information today before we taped um, for North Dakota State, Montana. Uh, I'm tired of seeing Montana. I want them to lose. I'm annoyed by their comeback that they made against SEMO because it was just so unexpected. And again, it, it plays into the whole thing that Sam Herter was tweeting about. And he wrote a whole column on it. And again, I want everyone to go check that out of why they made the playoff. It's infuriating, and they're the most infuriating team this year. But an update from Lucas Sem, uh, I, I, I believe he is a reliable source, has said that North Dakota State head coach Mike Entz said that he does not expect fullback Hunter Lipke, the team's leading rusher and NFL hopeful, who missed their last game of the shoulder injury, to be available on Saturday. Currently working with medical experts outside of the region. So, assuming if that is correct, no Lupke. No Hunter Lupke. And I wrote yeah. that in the notes without knowing that. And I said, this team runs through Hunter Lupke. And he has been the leading rusher. He has been a huge point for success. Not as much Cam Miller. They don't have a Christian Watson this year, man. They, this is all on Lupke, who has been the best player on that offense. Don't don't laugh at me for that voice. Crack. I'm not. I'm not. I know, I know you're, you're, you're a little sickly right now. I As good as they are on defense and as good as the athletes that they have with Spencer Wade and James Kazor, that is frightening that you don't have your best player. And I swear to God, Sean, if they like can't run the ball and Montana wins because of this, because they don't have Lipke, I'm going to be so goddamn pissed off. I'm going to be so mad if Montana wins this game. Inconsolable. I'll be inconsolable because uh, what a blessing that is for Montana. What a, what a blow it is for North Dakota State. But North Dakota State, as long as we've been covering it, that has been the – the trickle down team uh, where they have depth, they have players, they have a scheme. And with that, okay, your turn to step up. Okay. He can't go. You're in, go do it. And then they perform at, uh, if not above or a little bit less than the person that they're replacing. You can't replace Hunter Lupke. He's going to be a, 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 he's a star in the FCS. He's a star. Yeah. He'd be a stud in the FBS. We get that. But they're too deep and they've done this before and they've had guys go down to injury before we've seen it. If it, whether it be on the offensive line, okay, go ahead, step up. Oh, you're going to the NFL too. Great. You get another, you get an extra game on your, on your huddle or DV sport. Regardless, it, it, it's going to be a, um, God, I hate DV sport. I know I everyone's using it for there. the replays. I know I have, I have DV sport st still uh, Somebody gave me access to some film on there. So I still have it. Oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> I don't want it though. Sure, <laughs> just taking up space on a computer. Exactly. The um, look, the I don't. I'm not overly worried. Doesn't mean I'm not worried. I'm not overly worried. So North Dakota State fans, you know, don't don't start getting them in a bunch. Just 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 go out there, watch the game. Just watch the game. Easier said than done. Uh, oh, I know. I. My pick, though, Sean, for this, I, I still lean North Dakota State. Because okay. I think if SEMO did what they did, and they lost, obviously, and I think that they are a less talented team, they're not as good of a team, and they, they almost beat Montana, I am picking North Dakota State to win this. I would pick them as well. I would pick um, uh, North Dakota State to win. Uh, also, on principle, I would pick them to win. Okay, sorry, I got a random. What the hell is this telling me that is disabled? Um, okay, so uh, bu, 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 Sanford, Southeastern Louisiana. So the was fighting that Blake is that your computer talking to you about your immune system because you're both yeah, robots? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I, I was I was told that something disconnected, which is very strange. Uh, Maybe your brain from your mouth. Yeah, that tends to happen a lot, especially right now when I am uh, uh, dying. Um, but. 
the Southeastern Louisiana uh, fighting Blake Rafinos are playing Samford. <laughs> and by the way, he was really happy you followed him today. He was really happy that you did that. I followed him like two days ago. Oh, did you? He didn't notice until today. He's too much more big yeah, time than you. Whatever. Um, Got a follow back from big Timmy D, though. Who's Timmy D? Get juiced up. I'm not going to spoil nothing. Uh, oh, I gotta. we got to schedule that, by the way. Getting juiced up. I told Jamie Williams we're doing that. He knows exactly what we're talking about. Why Why does Jamie get the inside scoop? Ja- ja- Jamie always gets the inside scoop. Whoa, he, what does he Jamie know, he, he knows about things before they happen. He knew that we were going to have a fight before it happened. He, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I need Jamie Williams to give us some scoop. Uh oh, he also gives me he also gives me occasional some info. I need some skinny Jamie. I know we're not right now. You don't like Jamie. I love Jamie. I love him, and you don't respond to his messages. I do because I'm friendly. I love Jamie Williams. Jamie, if you if you would you wouldn't believe some of the things that Joe has said about you over text. I have not said. I have never said. Oh, I'll pull the receipt. I have Jamie. Jamie, at least if I'm saying anything about you, it's on the show. Joe I have never Twitter said Twitter fingers. You don't say anything to him either. You don't say anything. You don't. I, I you talk have, to Jamie plenty. No, you don't. I I have never said you could. I would. It would take you hours to find something. What is this? Negative, the Jamie I Williams said. bowl? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Fighting Blake Rafinos are traveling to play Sanford. And simply put, I know it's great that they won and they beat Idaho and they had a fantastic week or round one performance. However, Michael Ayers, I feel, continues to air it out gonna have a great week uh he statistically is and should be up for the walter payton he has been fantastic this year i think he's better than duck hodges from a couple of years ago um but regardless uh great quarterbacks the best quarterbacks win football games simply put yeah i'm leaning sanford in this even though southeastern louisiana just decided just to move on that's what they decided to do they said no what they had the perfect mentality. They said, we're going to win by any means necessary, and they did. Congratulations. I'm happy for you, uh, but I'm not that happy for you. Uh, Samford has uh, been impressive, and they, uh, they've they been impressive all year. And whenever I've said or, or doubted them, even in my own uh, personal life, they've shut me the hell up. So I'm sick of that. I'm sick and tired of that. So Samford, <laughs> I, I'm leaning in this game. Uh, I am as well, obviously, as I just highlighted there. Finally, this last game, I, or the, this next game. I this this should be the end of of Furman. I'm I'm I am on my last nerve because like it started with me just kind of arbitrarily you saying. Hate, why are you hating on the Dins, man? Because like I, their fans don't like me. I and I don't know how it, it was so unintentional. It wasn't like the Holy Cross thing. They just don't like me. And some of them are very friendly, but they I, have for some reason created this this. I have a disdain for them now. I need I a Furman ex- hat. Why I got it because. It is a cool hat. I I, and a, I, like, uh, I I like the Paladins. I think that they were a great program, but you the, they the, got the, a gorgeous stadium. I have a baseball from one of their camps. Why? Because I hit a home run there. No. So I just took it out of their bucket. Nice. Yeah. Um my point is is that their fans um <laughs> look at me trying to defuse you a little have bit. I saw frustrated you were, I saw me. Your, your your forehead veins going ahead. Impossible. Head Impossible. <laughs> Their game against the Incarnate Word should be should be the end of their run. Lindsey Scott is fantastic. He is. He is a great, great player. And as I just said with Michael Ayers, Hairs, Ayers, whatever you pronounce it. If you have a top five quarterback in FCS in a game like this, you have a very high chance of winning the football game. And their Agreed. offense is unstoppable. I uh it would be a mega Furman move to beat Incarnate Word. And I'm buying into it. This might be my upset me, watch. Not to upset uh, even, not even to upset you. Not even to upset Joe. I, people will believe that it, it is. This might be a little upset watch for, for, for old Sean Anderson here on the FCS podcast. Incarnate Word has had such a great year. They've been so good. I've I've eaten my crow. I, I I have I have I have had to walk back statements and say that they were washed. Say that without Cameron Ward they can't do anything. I, I I've said it all. I've walked it back. I've been shamed publicly. Uh, the Incarnate Ward fans were relentless. I'm giving you another shot. 
I'm so giving you another shot at me. You're galvanizing I'm, oh, I'm, another. I'm giving base. them another shot at me. Okay, good for you. Martyr uh, me. The only thing I will throw in there <laughs> for this game, um, it is worth noting, and one of the best things that I've ever read, and I, I'd always believe this, but one of the best things that I read that I think uh, summarized it, uh, Lou Holtz in his book pointed this out, that if, if there is ever speculation of a coach leaving, it almost always has a detrimental effect on a program. Sure. And G.J. Kinney, who is the head coach, there is speculation that he might leave to go to Tulsa. His name has also been brought up at other programs. So that is one thing, even though I'm picking Incarnate Word to win this game, it is something to monitor because it could be enough to distract them. They could lose purely off of that. I'm rolling dins, man. I All think right, roll I'm the rolling dins. dins. Roll those dins, baby. Uh, last game to wrap us up, Sacramento State, Richmond. Look, Reese Dinsky is great. That offense is great. Yeah. I'm not going to doubt Sacramento State, man. This is not the game that they're going to lose. Cam Skedabo and the defensive players that they have, Caleb Nelson, Armin Bailey, are both fantastic. I I don't have any faith in Richmond. I'm just going to keep that very simple. I'm picking Sacramento State. I, it's Sacramento State has had the formula all year. They've had the formula. They're just winning games. Formula, formula, formula. Richmond feels like a team that could disrupt the formula. Not break it, not beat it, but disrupt it. Disrupt it enough to make it close. Disruptive enough to make Sacramento State have to go deep, deeper in their bag of tricks or just deeper in their bag. Say, hey, we're getting some pushback this year. We got to really start playing, boys. We're, we're, we're looking to, to the finals because, hey, look at us. We're the number two ranked team in the nation. You, you don't mess around with this Richmond team. I, I, they're they're going to go out there and play their hardest. They're going to go out there and they're going to dial it up. They're going to dial it up on defense. And you know what? They've got a damn good quarterback who's not, I don't think is, is too small for the situation. I think he's ready. I, I think Reese Udinsky has been in the FCS long enough mm-hmm. and has, has played in enough uh, 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 functioning offenses to know how to uh, play in these situations. Sacramento State, more talented team, better formula, correct. But right now, it, it, it's it's tough for me to be 100% all in on Sacramento State. I would give it a, 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 a fair 65-35 shake for me uh, really? for Sacramento State to win. Yes. Give me 95. What? Okay. Oh, why are you this looking at a, me like I'm a crazy person? This is a mismatch. This is a huge mismatch. The spiders are getting squashed, brother. Oh, this this I don't okay. like this energy from you. Uh, it's are my, you trying to, are you trying to my last leg energy this is your last, this is your last gasser and you said, I'm going to try to beat the, beat the time here. Yeah. Yeah. I already recorded a half-assed, uh, uh, reaction to the, the, uh, the Georgia tech coaching decision and that sure that, that was, I've been getting bashed on the comments of that, but whatever. Um, <laughs> stop reading the comments. I know. I Colin? know. Colin's supposed to be our comment supervisor. I know. Well, that's a- he should alert us <laughs> of all the, uh, all the comments that are necessary. <clears throat> Colin should be saying, okay, if there's a technical glitch, co- uh, comment about that, alert us. I have not heard from Colin, actually, admittedly. I, there must mm-hmm. be an election going on or something. I haven't heard about him either. Not someone, yeah. Our, yeah. our thoughts and prayers with Colin Cetric. Um, yeah. All right. At Joe DeLeon, at Sanderson Radio, hit the subscribe button. We're going to be screaming plenty at the end of this, this, this round, so make sure you don't miss out. Uh, we'll be back with more comment where we messed up. Back City on YouTube. Act City on YouTube. You are Y'all ready know. to skip it. Drive safe, everybody. <laughs>